At this point, Heather was missing, and they don't really know where she's at. However, they do know that she was having an affair with a married man who also worked at the Tilted Kilt by the name of Sidney Moore. Being bad has never felt so good. We learned all about it in just that first little short period of time because everybody who wanted to help told us everything, more than we wanted to know, really. I'm When you're in love, you're in love. When you're 20, you don't always necessarily think through all of those things. Doing bad things to you. Sidney Moore was 37 years old. He had three kids. And he was married to a 40-year-old woman named Tammy. She was nearly twice Heather's age. Tammy and Sidney Moore were married over 15 years. When I got involved in this case, they had a son that was around 15, a daughter that was around 13, and another son that was around 10 or 11. Tammy Moore was definitely the more domineering part of that couple. She told Sydney where to work, when to work, what to do. Uh, if I would classify Sydney as anything in that relationship, it would be utterly submissive. They both had jobs at night, or they worked at night. They would sleep during the day. They were homeschooling their children. So literally, you could live in Myrtle Beach and never even run across these people. Prior to this affair, Sydney did have another previous affair. I think Tammy, being the domineering person she was, always was suspicious of Sydney, especially after the first affair he got caught having. It wasn't a secret to those that worked at the kill. Um, you know, we all knew about it. The affair between Sidney Moore and Heather Elvis was the worst kept secret in Horry County. By now, Heather's relationship with Sidney had been going on for about three months. And there were lots of folks who worked at the Tilted Kilt with her who felt that this relationship had just crossed the line. There were definitely people that we worked with at the Tilted Kilt that did not agree with Sidney and Heather's relationship. One day, two of the girls decided to call the Tilted Kill and pretend to be Tammy, Sydney's wife. I don't know if they were jealous, if they were upset that she was dating a married man. They decided to make a prank phone call and said, this is Tammy Moore. I know about you and my husband. I need you to stop right now. And when Heather got that phone call, she totally freaked out. After that prank call, coworkers say that they didn't see Sydney coming around Heather anymore. Then, by the end of October 2013, Sydney and Heather's relationship completely unraveled when Tammy found out, for real this time, about their affair. And it's at this point that Tammy confronted Heather. Heather received a phone call, and it was Tammy on the other end, and she said, I know you're with my husband, essentially. Like, I know you've been sleeping with my husband. Sydney got on the phone and said, you were just some girl that spread your legs. He pretty much belittled Heather and made it seem like it was nothing, and that he just used her for a booty call. Heather was crying because they broke up, and she was very upset about it. After Tammy found out about the affair, she was absolutely livid. She did um, call Heather a lot, text Heather a lot. Someone's about to get their beat down. She was posting a lot of disparaging comments on social media, and Heather was legitimately terrified. You can tell me who you are right now, or I will find out another way. Nobody you need to worry about anymore. And what did they say? Do you remember? Oh, she was threatening her. Hey, sweetie, you ready to meet the missus? Basically just letting her know that she was there and she knew. And what did she say? Are you ready to meet the missus? That doesn't sound that bad. Well, she did mention something about Sydney taking his last breath. Your bitch is about to take his last breath. Tammy was relentless. She would call her nonstop for hours and hours and hours. She would call off Sydney's phone. The breakup between the two of them was nasty. It didn't go down well. Um, it ended with threats. I'm giving you one last chance to answer before we meet in person, only one. She was sending pictures of her and Sydney performing sexual acts videos of you know the two of them together i guess kind of to taunt heather heather didn't shy away from responding i think you're a little obsessed with me nah it was a bore 
she, I don't want to say push Tammy's buttons, but certainly didn't just brush it off. Really? So that's why you're still childishly texting me from your cheating husband's phone? Your skank needs to leave me alone. Were you concerned for Heather, or was Heather concerned after those text messages came in? Heather was definitely freaked out. I think she was terrified of her. I mean, her, her demeanor completely changed over the next few weeks. Like, she was, she was very paranoid. Heather was genuinely scared. Like, she didn't want to ever see Tammy. In September 2013, Heather wrote on her Twitter page, once upon a time, an angel and a devil fell in love, and it did not end well. She probably was referring to her and Sydney. Heather just kept saying, leave me alone. Leave me alone. I don't want anything to do with this. And the calls did stop. Finally, they did stop. Once Tammy finds out about this affair, the Moors take a road trip all the way out to California. But this is after purchasing a brand new black F-150. It was a three week trip. So it was a lot of time together. They drove all the way to California and drove back. According to the Moors, the purpose of the trip was to reconcile their marriage. Heather was heartbroken. It took a few weeks for Heather to kind of come back around to become that bubbly type person. Heather started coming back to her normal self, always joking, always laughing, giggling, pulling pranks on people, the Heather that we've always known and loved before October. By the beginning of December, there was no communication between Heather and the Moors. Heather was really looking forward to her future after putting everything to rest with Sydney. By all accounts, Heather had moved on. She was dating again. In fact, on the night she disappeared, she was out on a date with someone new. But now, Heather was gone and gone without a trace. And police went to the tilted kilt, and that's where they were tipped off about Heather's affair with Sidney Moore. So the police immediately go to Sidney's house. They talk with him in December 20th, early morning, I'd say 2 a.m. Yes. When's the last um, it's either last night or night before, I can't remember. What's your relationship with her? There is no relationship. There, previous there relationship? was a relationship. I broke it off. So he was trying to give the police this idea of, look, I'm over her, I haven't reached out to her, I don't know where she is, I've had zero contact with her. At any point, did you go down around the Peachtree Landing there? No. So there's nothing that's going to show up? No. you want to say if she happens to be watching right now. Heather, if you're watching this, if you can see it, if you can hear it, we miss you. But we want you home. Tell me where you're at. Oh, come. It doesn't, <clears throat> doesn't matter where, doesn't matter when, doesn't matter why. Just tell us where you're at. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.